welcome to this week's piece. So this is a very special one to me because my sister-in-law contacted me about creating the crib for their first baby girl. So they have two sons and this will be their first daughter. So it's very exciting and of course I said yes, I would love to do this for them. And so I scoured everywhere. We actually both did. We were looking for a crib to use for the base of this. I just needed to make sure that the back had something that I could actually work on because cribs have the little slats everywhere and it was actually pretty difficult to find one that had the solid back like this. But anyways I found these little sponge pads to go on my orbital and I thought this would be the perfect project to try this out on because of all the slats and because of the curves on the top and I kind of just wanted to give this a try and see uh, how it did. The velcro on it was perfect I have no complaints about that and the foam pad did help a little obviously on these flat surfaces it doesn't matter so much but it did come in handy around all of the edges and I could notice a difference and I felt like I didn't have to be as careful with my orbital with that on there so that's something so I give this entire piece of scuff sand and then I'm just going to clean it up with my chalk mountain cleaner as I always do it's just getting kind of that scuff on there, a little bit of tooth, so that the paint has something really, really good to adhere to. Now I'm not using primer on this because I will show you guys later. Generally primers have a little bit more of a chemical edge to them and I didn't want that on this piece because babies like to teeth on the edges and things of their cribs. So there's plenty of evidence on this crib specifically. <laughs> but so I tried to be very careful in the products that I used in designing this. Of course I would never do a crib to sell. This is specifically for my niece, my family, some you know people that I'm comfortable with and I'm not worried about anything. It just I would never do a crib for a stranger. Let's I'm just gonna throw that out there right now. Alright now we're getting into the fun stuff. So I knew I was gonna do a race stencil on this and once I had it picked out, I knew that I was going to do this facet because if you've seen any of my videos before, you know that this is my go-to raised stencil medium. It's very easy to use, very inexpensive, and they use it in the walls of your home, so you know that it's safe in that regard. Now here's the stencil that I chose. The only stipulation my sister-in-law had for me was that she wanted flowers on it didn't care about the paint, didn't care about, she is like my dream client. Every time I do a piece for her, I'm just over the moon about it. She's so wonderful. Um, so I had a bunch of ideas running around in my head. I sent her a bunch of images, a bunch of stuff, and then I eventually landed on the stencil and never told her about it. So um, I'm really hoping that she loves it. I think she will. But so to do the facet, you add the compound and water to your desired consistency. Um, if you are somebody who likes it a little bit looser, that's fine, you can do that. If you like it a little more paste-like, you can do that. I like it to where if I dump my spoon upside down, it will slowly fall off, but will kind of hang there for a bit. That's my preferred consistency, but you do whatever makes you feel comfortable. Now, when I'm working on these larger areas like this, um, they're kind of a pain in that you have to wait for the stuff to dry. Now this joint compound is I believe the 20 minute version so it actually doesn't take 20 minutes to fully set up but you can give it about that amount of time um, a little bit less before you can start working on something else. But I get my stencil lined up where I want it to be and then I will do the flat areas first and that kind of sticks it down kind of like tape and holds it in its place and then because I cannot stand having the stencil, like that blank border around the edges of things, I have to let the stencil right up over the edge. And then along those edges are going to be really, really heavy with the joint compound. That's because I cannot, like I said, I don't want that gap going around the edges where the stencil has the line around the edges. I have to lift it up and have to put it over because I, I can't handle looking at that gap and knowing that it was a stencil that did that. So if you're like me and have a little bit of OCD in that, you raise your stencil up over the edge just a little bit. Know that your stencil medium coming through is going to be thicker in those areas and then you will fix it later. So I'll show you what I do to fix it, but you could just be one of those people that don't care and you will just want your stencil down flat, 
flat because that's the easiest way to go about it and that is totally fine. If that's, you know, what brings you joy, then absolutely do it. But I, I just, I hate seeing that line of stencil to no stencil and then the wall or whatever. So I have to get it in there, smoosh it in up as much as I can, and then know that this isn't going to be perfect and not crazy detailed because we're using a joint compound anyways. So you're gonna have a lot of texture in it and it's gonna be fine in the end because this is going to be a very textured look and feel in a bunch of different ways. So you can see me smoothing out the top. I don't do this perfectly. I want those trowel marks because I think it looks cool and it gives a lot of interest. And the more marks that you have in this, the less chance you are going to be able to see the lines where the stencils butt up and meet each other for every time you put another one down. So keep that in mind, because there is a seam when you do this, you can almost never get it exactly perfect. But if you kind of make sure it already has texture in general, that will help hide those seam lines when you go to do the other sections. Isn't that part so satisfying? I just, I love taking that off. Okay, so with the stencil still wet with this, this stuff, like I said, does dry pretty quickly. I will get it on here. And then for these two sections, I can work with the wet stencil and it's not a big deal. It doesn't go through, doesn't leave too much stuff around it. Everything will be fine, but I can only do these two large sections and then I have to take a break. All right, so here's where I'm cleaning up these edges. So I take a smaller little spatula and I will kind of shove it in and lift off the excess compound. So I'm still keeping the shape underneath and sometimes it might smudge a little bit, but again, it just, once it's painted, just looks like texture and it's, and it's fine. But if you can just slide it in there, don't mess up what's underneath. You have to be very careful about underneath the spatula. But if you get it right in where there's just that extra amount sitting there, you cannot tell that this was a stencil put on because it doesn't have that bare area going around the edge. And then I use the same thing to just clean up any extra parts that are sticking up anywhere that it wasn't supposed to have joint compound on. So like I said, I'm only going to be able to get two stencils out of that joint compound right there because they're so large. So I will have to wash my stencil in between because now when I go back, I'll be able to finish it the entire project. But until then, oh, this is just a shot of the baby teething marks. I thought this was so funny and I had to share it with you. They just, they were just eating finish off the top of this rail. <laughs> oh, so fun. So anyway, now that that joint compound, seriously guys, it was just, I had time to wash my stencil and then I could come back and start doing this again. And it was dry enough that I could lay the stencil over the top without messing up or smearing what I've previously done. So this is a new batch of joint compound and again, a clean stencil. So it's the exact same process. I added on, I made sure that the stencil was lined up with the other one that was already down and dried and smear it every which way, shove it up into the edges so that that's fully up against the edge there, and then repeat. And so when I can do this section here and then I will go, you'll see me miss that section there. It touched a little there, but it didn't actually mess up that flower at all, so that was awesome. Um, and then I'll come back and do the last corners because everything kind of dries. I just work from side to side. And here I'm just going to speed through. This thing is getting a base coat of mellow white and it is so boring to watch that, so speed. Um, I took a sanding sponge and just knocked down all of the high points on the stencil before I start painting. And that will also help hide the seams between each of the stencil lines. And then obviously you have to clean it because that stuff makes a bit of dust. So again, base coat of mellow white all over.
And even faster than speeding through paint is just showing you that I've already finished a second coat and I'm going to do the second coat on the right side too. So the colors I'm going to start with are aquamarine, pastel peach, wisteria, and woodland harbor, except I ended up not using woodland harbor. So there's that. Okay, so I start with a base coat of the white while it's wet. And then I'm literally just adding in dots of, this here is the pastel peach, but it doesn't matter what order you go in. It doesn't matter what colors you're using. I'm just adding dots and then blending them into the white. And the white tones down those colors and feathers them out just beautifully. Again, you could do this with black, you could do this with gray, you could do this with any other, any other color that you want, but I'm going for kind of like an iridescent bubble finish in the end. That's my, that's my vision, like a pastel little girl bubble, if you can have that thought in your mind. That was the finish I was thinking of. So that's why I chose these colors. And like I said, you just kind of want them to go everywhere and you're just blending them out into each other, into the white to get like a seamless look. This is not a clean brush, it's just I have a brush for each color and then I will use that exact brush to blend out everything. Um, this is a messy blend so it doesn't matter if things get a little muddy, it kind of looks better that way. I am keeping my water on hand because this white has obviously been on here long enough for me to do the peach and then the purple and now we're on to blue so it's just helped keeping things moving and fluid so that I'm not getting crazy brush strokes. I don't care if there's a little bit of brush strokes, but in this part I want it to be relatively smooth. And you can see like as you kind of step back and check out your colors, you might be like, oh I want to add a little more here, a little more of this color there, and you just you step back and look at it. It's really hard when you're just sitting there painting the whole time. You can't really see the whole picture. so. Step back, check your work, and then go in and adjust from there. All right, you guys know I love this stuff. This is the seashell color metallic. It is lovely. I use it as a base for almost all of my metallics when I'm not using glazing dusts. So I'm adding a smidge of the pastel peach to this. And then I'm also adding my satin poly to it. So this is going to act as my sealer and also make this thing pop and really give it that iridescent look that, you know, bubbles have. So, and it's also going to make it, the outside white portions will turn into a champagne metallic and the inside will do that bubble. It's just, it's incredible. You can see with just that one stroke there, how much it makes it stand out and just... Huh, it's life. It's so good. So you can see it's a very sheer coverage. We're not trying to cover anything up. We're just tinting a little bit and sealing. That's it. But in doing so, it's just making all of that just pop like crazy. For this stuff, I do actually use a very, very fine synthetic brush. Um, it really, really likes to show brush strokes, so keep that in mind. Um, you have to use a really, really fine brush if you don't want any, and you will still see brush strokes. You could also spray this if you wanted. Um, that'd probably give you the best finish. Or what I will also do is use one of my other brushes and do the X's all over the place. And that gives it texture without looking like exact brush strokes, if you know what I mean. Okay, here I'm just going back in with the white and cleaning up the edges so that that's a pure white around all of that and cleans up everything. And then if I get any white on there, it's fully sealed in because as you know, we put poly in our metallic, so it will just wipe right off if I get any on there.
Okay, so for my next batch of sealer, I just added, it's the same thing, the poly, the seashell metallic, and then I added aquamarine instead of the peach. So this went on a little bit brighter than I had wanted, so I ended up toning it back with the peach also, and you'll kind of see that it's way, way toned down once we're finished, but this still gives you the very sheer metallic look, but with a hint of blue. Um, like I said, I decided I didn't like how bright this one was in particular because I was going to use those two colors back and forth kind of interchangeably over the entire thing. But I thought the blue is just a little bit too strong. So I used much less blue and then added, as you can see, more of the kind of pink champagne color. And it tones it so nicely. It's just beautiful. You do have to work quickly with this stuff because it does want to set up quite a bit faster. Um, you can work at it a little bit and kind of get any strokes out that you saw, kind of wanted to dry in there, you can work at it a little bit. For the final touches on the inside here, I added just a teeny tiny bit of the blue just around the edges and then I used the pink champagne again to fade those out. So you can see a little ghost of blue around the edges and then it fades into, you know, the rest of the colors. And then for the rest of the crib itself, it all got just the pink champagne sealer. And that's it for that. It just gives it the most beautiful, soft, very you know, tiny baby girl look, but still she's fancy. And then of course I had to put it together to make sure everything looked okay and it all sat right and the colors were gonna look okay with everything put together. Oh hi, Taryn here with Elohim Upgrades and we've got our finished piece. So this turned out so lovely. I was going for bubbles. That's what I described when I've been talking to my sister-in-law about this. She had one stipulation and that was to have flowers on it. She didn't care what kind. She's very good about getting pieces from me. She's just like, whatever you want and then maybe she'll throw in an idea. So it's whatever I wanted plus flowers, which is what she wanted. I think I haven't decided yet. I've got a few ideas. Um, I'm gonna add a little something special for her um, later on, once I get a little more info, but that's like an added personalized touch. So nothing, you guys didn't miss anything. Um, and I might hit the tops of this with some gilding because it's, it's me and sometimes I gotta gild stuff. But overall, I think this is so lovely and perfect, perfect for my new little niece. And obviously it is safe for weight. <laughs> um, very sturdy, very nice. It's a beautiful crib. I'm so pleased with it. I just, yeah, I love these blends over the ray stenciling and the ray stenciling, you guys, it just adds a whole other level to your pieces. So if you want to try it out, I totally recommend it. It's a really easy thing to do, depending on the size you're doing. It could be time consuming just because you're having to wait till part of it dries before you can add another layer to it. But um, if you if you do it, I guarantee you won't be sad because it's just it's so it's so beautiful and adds just the best interest. 
Um, thank you so much, as always, for all that you do. I truly just, I'm so thankful for you for liking, sharing, commenting, all the things that you do, the wish list, the coffees. You guys are just incredible. I'm so thankful. And uh, let's get you some photos and I'll see you next week. Oh, I will, I'm gonna try, cause I have to take this down to California with me, um, get some reveal shots of this. Cause I think, I think I can sneak it in her house, but we'll see. All right, bye. You forgot to say, you forgot to, you forgot to, you forgot to do me in it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, this is Lucas with Elegant Upgrades. No, and you. Oh, mm -hmm. this is Taryn and Lucas with Elegant Upgrades. Feel better about that? Can you sign off? Say bye? Bye. Silly bye.